And so I knew, I know he's got stories. I know he's got stories. So we're going to hear one from him right now. This is his first time on The Narrators. Uh, he is the CEO of Perspective Media. Please welcome Stuart Tucker Lundy. PTA teacher, but, uh, <laughs> God damn. <laughs> oh, side note, if you fuck a guy with maggots in his eye, and if you don't take a dick in the ass, you're a hypocrite. <laughs> oh, we are here to talk about, don't encourage me, don't encourage me. Um, we are here to talk about the perfect plan. Again, my name is Stuart Tekalandi. Uh, you're probably thinking, the perfect plan with him? God damn, he is the poster child for everything going right in his life. Uh, well, I will tell you that the perfect plan starts with imperfection. My journey of imperfection started in 1982. I dove in a lake, and I was 14 years old. You're all supposed to go, oh, oh. Thank you, that makes me so good. I feed on your sorrow. <laughs> that was in 1982. I, uh, I was uh, 14 at the time, and uh, uh, I broke C4 and C5 of my vertebrae, which left me a quadriplegic at the time. I am now 50 years old, and uh, I, uh, uh, what am I? Let's see. There's so many things I am in life. First of all, my husband to that lady over there. So that's a good thing. Um, yes. Um, they let me out. They let me out and I procreate. And then, but, um, but uh, I'm sorry, getting back to my story. So, uh, that, damn, they cut me off, did they? Okay. Uh, that was in 1982. Uh, 1982. And uh, yeah, 36 years, do the math, uh, 36 years or so. Um, but the imperfections started kicking in because I had a mother. That was uh, that woman, that strong woman, that uh, said to me, "You got to figure this out. You got to figure this out." So I've been figuring it out because there's no perfect plan. If somebody tells you that there's a perfect plan, just bitch slap them. Just, yeah. just, just, just bitch slap them. Because I don't, I personally, I don't think there is a perfect plan. I figure this out every day. When I say this, life, life in general, we all try to figure out every day. That's the purpose of life is figuring it out. We don't get it right. You know, I mean, if we wake up the next day, that means we got a reset button. You get a do-over. So, uh, uh, gosh, it's, 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 it's been a great journey. I often tell people the quality of my life is such as that if you knew how much I had, how much fun I had in this chair in the last 36 years, you would all be running to that fucking lake, jumping in. <laughs> Let me get in there. Let me get in there. You just, what, I'm serious. This is, I'm not, I'm not bullshitting either. I mean, you know, you follow me on Instagram or whatever. I just try to kick life in the ass because this, to some people, is like, oh my god, oh you poor soul. Like I said, a few feet on your sympathy, or whatever. But uh, it, it's, it's not a thing where it stops me. It just, like my, my, my mother used to say all the time, the only thing that's wrong with Stuart is he can't walk, and that's it. So uh, the journey has been such as that every day is a, is a new day. Every day I get to, to do it over. I get to, uh, to, to, to change people's lives. I get to tell people that, uh, you know, you can do this shit. You can do this shit. This is not a death sentence. It's never has been a death sentence. But uh, um, perfection is, like I said, very overrated. It's overrated. But I think the perfection comes when you get it right. And you're not going to get it right. You're never going to get it right. So the thing is trying over and over and over and over again. I just remember many times when, and I, I'm sorry, I won't be doing this babbling here and there. I remember the first time I went to Miami. Some, someone told me, uh, I remember my family is from Miami, so I went down to Miami, and uh, no one's telling me not to go to Miami. This is pre-911, things like that. So I bought a ticket, and I went down to Miami. And... Uh, you know, you have to tell people how to take care of you. You got a guy that doesn't move his uh, 
arms or legs or doesn't walk and sometimes it scares the shit out of people so and they don't know quite what to do with you so you have to run your mouth and tell them so planning is not so much an option sometimes that it is just the imperfection of it we, it's a work in progress work in progress i think we all are work in progress um the thing i just really want to emphasize in life in general is just just, just keep on at it, keep at it, keep at it. I mean, he went, even went down to Miami. I went down there and I, I had such a good time because these were places that I went when I was uh, 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 when I was younger, actually, and uh, I spent my 20s. And, because uh, I, I was a professional whore and I, I whored around in Miami quite a bit in my 20s. And uh, um, a Wiltshire whore, would, if you will. And uh, uh, um, all things are possible. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, I am telling you, it is, uh, it's, it, it, it was one of those things, it's one of those things where I, I, I wish you guys could live the way that I live. I almost feel sorry for you guys. You able-bodied, <laughs> limit yourself. You limit yourself so badly sometimes. I know I'm being condescending right now, but it's okay, you're white. Um, <laughs> so, but no, you limit yourselves. You limit yourselves, and, and, and that's the thing, you know, I, there, there is nothing that I don't feel that I can't do. Instead of, you know, outside of running alongside of Usain Bolt or something like that. Okay, then, you know, that motherfucker's got me. But other than that, <laughs> I, just, I just see sometimes people that, that limit themselves and they say to themselves, well, my, my, my word is, my, my, my mind of thinking or my motive, mo mode of thinking is, why not? I'll try it once, I'll try it twice. Maybe about that third time, it's like, oh shit, I'm gonna do the Maggie eye with the Maggie thing. <laughs> but you have to keep on trying. But the goal is to try, just to try. Like I said, for a guy like me, a guy like me who dove in a league 36 years ago can make a life so envious of people that follow me on Instagram and, uh, and I have a beautiful wife. And uh, she wasn't the first beautiful wife, but she is the. Uh, I'm going to get my ass kicked. I can feel her eyes right now. I can feel her eyes over there looking at me like, you motherfucker. <laughs> but I, I just, I, I really implore you, implore you to just live the fuck out of life. My father, I, I'm remembering this shit as I go along. I know Ron, you said to practice, but fuck you. Um, uh, I remember my father. My father died of an aneurysm. And I think this is why I live the way I do, because he didn't have a plan in 19, I think it was 96, uh, he died. My father died of an abrupt uh, aneurysm. And uh, uh, one day he got up, went to work, he worked at, uh, at uh, Walter Reed Hospital, not Walter Reed, I'm sorry, uh, at Andrews, Air Andrews Air Force Base. And uh, he worked for Ronald Reagan at the time. Uh, he was doing with the planes and uh, securing cargo, things like that. So one day he was sitting at the table and uh, an aneurysm occurred in his head and he fell over onto the table and he a balloon and it didn't kill him, but it uh, scrambled his brains up pretty badly. And uh, so he lived for 27 days. And on that 27th day, my mother had to make the decision to pull him off a of life support because the, the aneurysm had then ballooned. So, you know, as a 50-year-old man now, I know, you're looking black on crap. Uh, <laughs> I think to myself, gosh, I'm living past what my father would have been at his age. I'm, I'm, I'm well into my 50s now. I have 50, I'm just saying. And I think about that, and I'm like, man, when I get caught up in a minutia of bullshit, or I start to deal with negative people, or just mundane bullshit, that's, it, it's holding me back from my perfect plan of life. I think to myself, well, aneurysm can happen right now. Do you really want to fucking be bothering with somebody right now while an aneurysm hits your head? Do you really? I mean, like, there'll, there'll be somebody on Facebook or for that matter, uh, a, a comment. You, you just want to sit and get ready to type that, that comment in and it's like, what if I'm typing a comment to some asshole that I don't know on Facebook and I fucking has a, have an aneurysm. <laughs> I would be so fucking mad. I would be like, oh shit. I mean, damn, that's so fucked up. So that's why I implore you, just, just don't sweat the, the small stuff. Get to the great stuff. Living life, wanting to, look, just live life. Live life to the fullest. So, 
Oh, gosh, I can't tell you, like I said, how happy I am. I'm not just telling you for that. I'm telling you, I'm telling you for yourself. I'm telling you because I live it every day. Every single day. I love life. I look at the, like I said, I look at the way my father died. 27 days of not knowing where he was at. 27 days of not knowing, you know, people, he would come in a lot of lucidity and not know he was where he was, things like that. So I just look, I think back at that now at 50 years old, like I said, and I'm like, man, I have lived the fuck out of life and I am so proud of myself. And I get to sit in front of you right now. It's a big ass light on me. I'm telling you. <laughs> How fucking happy I am. Where else can I go to tell people that? Nowhere. But I don't fucking care. But I'm just saying, <laughs> it's good life. It's good life. It's really it. It really is. So, to wrap this babbling monstrosity of a, of a dialogue up, uh, just please don't take a minute or a moment for granted. Live in the moment. Don't get too far ahead of yourself. Don't get too far lost in your, your past. Stay in that moment. Look at me. Think about me. And think about the black guy with the big punisher or the thing on the shirt. And <laughs> say, if that motherfucker did it, I know I can. My name is Stuart Tucker Lundy. And I really appreciate your time tonight. I do. <laughs>